Ready for another giveaway? It's time for another giveaway because that's what we do every single episode. Today, what we're giving away is Maps Prime Pro. Improve your mobility, get more connected to your movements, make any workout you're doing a better workout with Maps Prime Pro. We're going to give that to you for free. Here's how you can win. Leave a comment below. Comment on the show that you're just listening to right now. Tell us about, uh, I don't know, an opinion on something we talked about. Take someone's side, start a debate, whatever. We will pick one of those comments. We'll pick the best comment. If we pick your comment, you'll get Maps Prime Pro for free. You also need to subscribe to this channel and turn on your notifications. By the way, turn on those notifications because we only do a giveaway in the first 24 hours that we drop the episode. So if you don't have notifications, there's no way for you knowing when we drop the episode so you can enter to win. And again, we give away stuff all of the time. By the way, this episode is phenomenal. One of my favorite episodes. You're going to have a lot of fun listening to it. One more thing. We are running a sale. So Maps Prime, Maps Prime Pro, and the Prime Bundle are all 50% off right now. Go check them out. Go to mapsfitnessproducts.com. Just use the code June Prime with no space for the discount. All right? Enjoy this podcast. Wait, Just, did you send flowers to Brooke too? Because I saw her post something about it. Her birthday, yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. Oh, no, that's nice. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I mean, this is why I was really excited. I mean, I, I don't, we don't seem to be getting the same response from our audience as, as I was hoping for, but- I mean, I like it because but it's- But the thoughtless guys listen to the podcast. <laughs> yeah, 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 but you Come did. on, guys, step it up. Send yeah. some flowers to somebody. Yeah, yeah. come on. Make yeah. somebody feel good today. And you yeah. guys love your wives? What's going on out there? Jesus, yeah. man. It doesn't yeah. have to be a birthday or holiday to send your wife some flowers. And send they- some to your wife. Send some to your girlfriend. Doesn't matter. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, man. It's got so- But anyways, yeah. I've uh, And I, they're super reasonable, man. I mean, you can, yeah. you can go cheap or you can go over the top and there's candy and other little package stuff. So yeah, anyways, yeah, I sent yeah. that over. It was I'm her gonna- birthday. You know, I was going to send you, you win points, Adam. <laughs> you know, I know you like them. I do. Yeah, I, was like, I should send Adam <laughs> some flowers. Kind of a flower guy. Yeah, I put a nice note on there. Hey, yeah. you're my flower. <clears throat> I have something for you guys. So, what happened? How often do you guys, you know, watch something or you read something, and you feel like really bad, like something maybe you've been saying for a long time, and you don't know the whole like backstory to? Well, it? there's this one time I was walking on the sidewalk, and there's a guy walk like standing, and he was looking right at me, and he didn't move out of my way. And so I just bumped him because I'm like, whatever. And then uh, he turned out to be blind. I felt terrible. <laughs> That's a true story. Oh, no. Yeah, That's I, a true I, story? I, like, a true story, dude. <laughs> no. I, I was walking. He was looking right at me. And I'm like, what an asshole. Move out of my way. You shouldoldered him? Yeah, I shouldered him. He's like, he, he kind of stumbled. You shouldered a blind guy? Hey, hey he stumbled. Bro, hey. And you, I go, what, are you blind? You, he goes, yes, I am. Oh, He's like, yes, oh, I am blind. God. And I was like, oh. Oh, my I'm God. I'm so oh. sorry. You are. I that think, hurts me a little bit. Can you bit. get out of hell for that one? I don't know, man. Is there, what do you, how many Hail Marys do you have to do? One, like you're past purgatory. You're gonna I have, felt yeah. really bad. Wow. Really, really bad. About okay, that. well, that's like nothing compared to how I felt. This was oh, okay. I felt a little bad, but not like that all bad. Right, all right. Yeah. You, know, you want to know what I felt bad about? So I was watching. Uh, I think it's called uh, '90s Pop, or this is Pop. This, I saw it. You saw it on Netflix. Hella good. So good. I watched the one on Boys to Men, which was excellent. ABC, yes. BBD. Oh yeah, they were uh, East they Coast were, family. They and were pretty amazing. Kind of sad story though. What kind of happened to them when it exploded with In Sync and 98 Degrees and everybody oh. else? Because they really were the ones that they were like, the first ones. They created that. Yeah, yeah. and, and they were the good ones. They were superior singers. Yeah, they were, they were way way better. But you know, and Black Sheep was the yeah. Other one. Oh yeah, that was yeah. the other one, huh? But so, then you know, In Sync so came out, Backstreet Boys. You know, yeah, what's the other one? Yeah, Ninety Eight Degrees. Yeah, which one the- had Justin Timberlake? In uh, Sync. Is that in- how do you know? <laughs> well, I mean, I watched the do- I watched the documentary. He was really into Britney Spears, so uh, you know, by yeah. proxy. Yeah, you're yeah, 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 Remember, yeah. I told you I didn't like Justin Timberlake because he was dating my girl. You know Dude, remember when his hey, remember when his hair looked like Top Ramen? Remember that? Yeah, it just looked like a bunch of Top Ramen. So I heard him. So popcorn kernels. Uh, one of the uh, one of the I think 98 degrees guy. I forget his Nick name. Nick Lachey. Uh, maybe I think the guy that was married to uh, Jessica. What is Simpson. happening right now? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know that much. You guys have yeah. so much pop reference. I'm so proud of you. Well, mine's just because I just watched it or whatever but there was a name for the 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 blonde in the front he, oh. he, he said it i never heard it before lance Bl- bass uh no. he said something like blonde uh roots or no oh, no no, no. Cr- no corn he made fun of himself yo he was yeah. but i didn't know there was a name for that so yeah. anyways back to why 
I feel guilty, or we should feel guilty, especially okay. you guys, because you guys, especially, us. <laughs> especially you, yeah. Okay, so assholes. How often do you guys shit on the whole auto tune thing, right? Like hard. I'll make a statement right long. now. It sucks, it's and you're terrible. not a musician if you use auto tune. Okay, you are terrible. Okay, so there's right. there's where you should feel bad okay. a little bit. Okay? I did that on purpose. This is what, yeah. Well, I mean, you guys have both have said this. Many I'm times. a sociopath, so yeah, I don't feel I'll, bad. I'll, so yeah, I'll, you can try. So I'll stamp this on me. Okay, so first of all, let's do the backstory on auto tune. Do you guys know the backstory, how it was created, and everything? Kind of cool. Well, I mean, synthesizer have been around for a long time no no so. autotune the software yeah, it just corrects the pitch so when you're singing like it kind of gets you in range not so. what it is cocksuckers what how did it <laughs> how did it come to be do you, guys, do you guys know the backstory on how it came to be <laughs> no, no of course I, not I'm, I'm not a historian i'm assuming it's someone yeah. invented it i don't well, know you no, act like i didn't you, watch your fucking you documentary act like you know so much but then you just start throwing out bad hey, stories this no. i hate it when you learn something you come in like an asshole like, out, you know out with it hey, with your exclusive knowledge welcome to my shoes guy oh Bar of, of this is what it, hey, this is what it feels yeah. like to be your co-host all the time. <laughs> Fucking guy. Always talking uncertainties. No, Let sorry. me tell you how I'm an expert because I right. memorized this article. All right. Anyways, what, what yeah. is so, it? So, okay, the guy, the bajillionaire who, who came up with it, so he's a total like math nerd guy. I forget the name of his job title, but he's the one who goes in and finds oil and they do it by blowing up dynamite and then the sound waves... Uh, we'll tell them if it's if it's if there's areas of pockets of oil. Right? Yeah, like refracts off of it, and by the sound of the way the sound changes, they know if yeah. there's oil or brilliant not. Brilliant technology, mm -hmm. by the way, and, and absolutely brilliant because yeah. I, I didn't understand how that worked, mm -hmm. and so he geeked out on the math of that, on the and the ability to manipulate and change sound mm. based off of that, and so he basically reverse engineered that for singers. Mm. And it's been around for quite some time. So I don't you know, feel bad yet. Well, I'll get there. Oh. Well, let me set the table, <laughs> right, guy. Wait a minute. I'm a like good, prepared over here. Not a good story unless I sit the table. So he he does all this, right? So he creates this this auto tune. And and by the way, it's been used for quite some time now. Mm -hmm. But the way people originally used it is not the way that ever really probably bothered one of you guys. Like Cher would use it for one little thing in a song, or if you if have you believe in love, I the love. That one yeah, right there, right. Yeah. So I, he, I could use some there right there. <laughs> there's these singers that you know they will uh, sing them. I don't know is it a melody? Is that the right way? They sing a whole melody, and then if there's one thing, there's like a little pitch off, and then they they would manipulate it with the auto tune. So it just be a, a tiny fraction yeah, of the so song. They do in the studio when they yeah, do post production. Ninety nine point nine percent of the population has no idea or could never be able to tell where it's at. The person who you guys don't like <clears throat> is the person who made it popular to use it throughout the song and. As like obviously, not right. like he was just trying like, to fix like all out in the front. Yeah, yeah. T Pain. So mm, T Pain yeah. becomes famous for being this guy who who uses the whole song in in auto, -tune. auto in auto tune. Yeah. And the research, by the way, for him to to get to to figure out what software was using it to do. You know that that wasn't like a, a common knowledge. That was so because it was like cheating. Mm -hmm. The music industry didn't come they out. They didn't want to reveal that. In fact, they yeah. lied about the yeah. whole share one. So they were they were asked in like a, a, a very popular article or whatever like that or interview. Did share use uh, this you know software to manipulate that auto tune with that? And they denied it mm. to try and play it off like it was really her voice. That's weird. The music industry lied. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah strange. What the hell? So it's so anyway. So he uses it now. He becomes an incredibly famous for this because mm -hmm. there it it still appeals to uh, a bunch of people. Sure, yeah. sounds good. Now he had an app for it. I remember I even downloaded it because it's just fun to use. Now he now he is like he's, you guys would like I like okay I, I, up until this point I really don't know anything about T Pain mm -hmm. so this is my knowledge in T Pain is like this hour documentary like I didn't like I just assumed like you guys did some asshole who hacked the system figured out auto tune probably a terrible singer. And it's just a, it's kind of not like that at all, actually. He was very fascinated by the technology and the uniqueness of being able to manipulate that and wanted to create something creative. And and he wanted to separate himself from anybody else. And this was a way to do that. And so he started to do all the songs with it and it and it took off. Now, here's the part that I felt really bad about was he went through actually depression for quite some time. He there was a, he talks about when he, the rise of his career, hanging out with Usher. And Usher pretty much walked over to him and said, you ruin the music. Mm. And you ruin music because of your abuse of the auto-tune. And he said it just totally crushed him because his intentions weren't to cheat the system. In fact, you don't find out till way later. The guy actually has a fucking pretty killer voice. Mm. Yeah, He did that um, tiny little desk 
thing on that one channel on YouTube. You guys ever seen that before? No. Oh, you've never seen Tiny Little Desk? You've seen it before. What? I don't. I don't remember. It's popular right now. It's a okay. YouTube thing. I believe. Uh, I, I want to say BBC does it. Are you Are you familiar, Doug, with Tiny Little Desk? Yeah, I think it's called Tiny Little Desk. He it's uses on YouTube. A tiny Little Desk himself. And it's uh, <laughs> they they sing. Um, tiny Little Computer. They sing with no instruments. It's just them doing uh, what you call it. Acapella. Yeah. Acapella. Yeah. So he and he sings on there, and it's incredible. Everybody is like blown I think away. I've seen Lady Gaga do something like that. It was just amazing. Almost every yeah. big singer has, has gone on Tiny okay, Little Desk. That's probably what it was. So you so. feel bad because you got depressed? Yeah, and I feel bad because he is an artist, just in a different way. It's yeah. because it's new to us. And then the, the whole thing sets the table for all different genres of music. And when it's new, people are so... Always. Th th this That's happens, true. yeah. A lot, I mean, with synthesizers in general, too. Like, There's like purists out there, musician-wise. They'll shit on any kind of new technology wow. or you know ways... Electric that guitar can, was shit on. Yeah, Electric so, I mean, that's just a common thing. So, yeah, yeah it's... it's. I'm just being... When old. you do something new, like you're going to get haters. Yeah, well, I'm, just, I'm just being an old guy. Yeah. You know? the, you, do you guys know there was a huge controversy when photography came out and people were saying that it was art? Art. People who painted had a big problem with this. It's like that's not oh. art. You guys are just taking pictures. So it's always and, th been and that's that way. my point. Yeah, was yeah. this? He actually really changed the game when it came. To, and, and everybody said it would be a fad. Oh, you're here, and then no one's gonna do it again. And like here he is. Everybody uses it. It's yeah. just a matter how much they use it. It's all about if mm -hmm. you enjoy hearing the sound. That's right. really what it all. And that's why I think at some and point his, his record sales obviously yeah. prove that. And that's why I think <laughs> at some point AI is going to make music that that is going to crush any. Well, human. I don't use going to figure us yeah, out. Yeah, I don't use pop music as a benchmark for anything. Anyway, you know, like <laughs> they, they can do whatever the fuck they want. They can have it over there. Yeah. You know, like if, you, if you're a music purist and like it, what, what you should be able to do whatever like acapella or like if. You do have a good voice. That's where Wait you a display minute. it. Hold on, aren't you like a huge Michael Jackson fan? Yeah, I love him, dude. But he's the king of pop. I know, but again, there's a few of the pop guys where I'm just like, hey, dude, dancing, singing. Yeah, like he. I mean, he had the the full like everything perfect. Yeah. Like he was about perfection. There's nobody even touches Michael. So like, yeah. you name somebody that's even close. Well, that's I Mike tell you what. After watching that documentary, I I am. Unbelievably he, he, impressive. Nobody touches him, but he touches us. Yeah. People. Anyway, he, 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 oh, wow. Damn it. Sorry. Wow. Oh, uh, boys to men, man. That was a good I, one. Uh, you know, after watching that and what they did when they did it, talk about the the foresight. To well, what was brilliant about them that I didn't even consider was at the time you had R and B acts. But the way that they dressed and presented themselves was a little bit urban, and so there wasn't a lot of crossover. Right? Mm -hmm. They would top the urban charts but wouldn't really do well on the other the pop charts and stuff like that boys to men comes out and you remember their do you remember how they used to dress yeah suit and ties though. yeah bow ties and they presented themselves totally different and that was on purpose to mm -hmm. give them crossover appeal yeah and they broke do you guys i didn't know this until they i watched broke it. all those records they broke uh elvis presley's number one record like how long elvis presley was number one for they broke it with, I think it was End of the Road. Wow. Yeah, it was like a 14-week run that Elvis had, and they broke it. But the, And then they broke it again. Oh, yeah, the own. End of the Road was in every dance. I hate it. Well, it was uh, <laughs> it's every, overplayed. Dude. Every yeah. eighth, eighth grade graduation. Yeah, every eighth grade, dude, everything. Like, it, I, everywhere you went, there was uh, End of the Road. Dude, I... They were so talented, though. Super. So yeah. talented, brilliant to no, do that really when they did it. Like, nobody nobody even thought to, to really do it like now, that. Now, how crazy is their fall, though? Because they were, su they were literally at the top of the world it's actually really sad because and then all of a sudden they th this is what they talk about in the do in the show they were at the top of the world crushing the charts yeah then come in these other boy bands like we said in sync backstreet oh. boys whatever literally the year after they were at a club and they they barely filled it with 50 people this was in a year wow yeah. this is why celebrity that's crazy this dude. is why people celebrities lose their mind because yeah. the rise and fall is so crazy especially if you're a kid if you're it's funny I was, as i was watching uh i was watching another one about the they called it what they called it the stockholm something yeah the, this they're a swedish influence too. yeah because like i didn't realize very interesting i didn't realize too. that there that a tremendous amount of the, the pop music that's popular that's written comes out of sweden mm -hmm. their writers and producers come out of there and like Britney Spears and a lot of these boy bands and was ABBA Swedish. Oh, That's yeah. ABBA came it out. They yeah. were like so it came, major force. They were actually the um, the original band that they based all these producers yeah. based all the rest off of was yeah. ABBA. Can I yeah. just say something right now? 
ABBA's amazing. Yeah. Just want to say that. And a lot, yeah, well, and a lot <laughs> yeah. of them, they, they didn't even, like, they, they didn't understand what they were singing, like, in English. Yeah. But they just sang it, like, perfectly. It became a huge hit here Well, do you know, what, you know what they hacked, right? So you normally write, uh, or correct me, Justin, if I'm wrong, you normally write music. The lyrics. Yeah, the lyrics, and then you play something to it, right? They did the music, and the lyrics had to fit. That's yeah, right. It, yeah, it depends. So, so, so here's an example. That's, yeah. that's the hack. Yes, yeah. and here's an example, right? So one of the most famous Britney Spears songs, right? Hit me, baby, one more time. Yeah. What the lyrics said were, hit me up again, baby, one more time. But they had to change it to hit me, baby, one more time to fit the music. Right. And they had to t change the title of the song because, you know, record stores and stuff were like, hit me, baby. hit me. Yeah, what does that mean? <laughs> what the hell's going on? This is abuse. So it literally changed to baby one more time. But that's why it didn't make sense, the lyric. Like, and a lot about? of those, and yeah, ABBA is happens. an example yeah. of why, you know, yeah. some people are like, they don't like it because the lyrics don't always Dude. make sense, but the lyrics were made to fit. In the, in By the, the way, as I'm watching this with Jessica, boy, yeah. does your perception change as you get older, right? As I mean, Britney Spears came out in what the late '90s, early 2000s. Uh -huh. So I'm like 18, 19 years old, and I'm watching these music videos, and I'm like, oh, this is so cool. Now I'm a father. You know, I have a, you know, I have a teenage son, a daughter who's about to turn into a teenager, and I'm watching this music video of this high school girl dancing with this little skirt doing her thing and I'm watching it and I'm like disgusted I can't believe oh see now that's these funny. little kids are dancing that's this way. funny you saw it that way because what I saw when I, I I remember there was so much do you remember the controversy that was oh, around she that got all I do but, but you know, when was, you're a teenager watching you don't think twice about that's, it because yeah, she's like the wholesome that's half of what, door. what blew her up was yeah. the controversy around that oh my god this little you know 17 or however old she was at that time girl dancing with a mini skirt on but when I looked at it I go like I remember how bad supposedly that was back then. I go, oh my god, the kids today are yeah, way, way worse. worse. Yeah. They, it actually oh, isn't dude. that. It's, I mean, it's a short dress, but it's well, not, it's all sexy. It's not stuff. short like some of these dresses are yeah. short. Dude, how many times did you see a thong uh, growing up? Yeah, like never. Yeah, it's everywhere. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> what's going on? I'm just saying they're yeah. all over the place. No, I mean, it's. I'm just. I'm not talking specifically about that. I'm. What I'm saying is my perception. No, like, I, I watch. No, I, you look at it from as a father's perspective, yes. which I do see that too. I was like, ooh, yeah, yeah. Like, like, I don't I'll, know if I want my 16 year old daughter falling in love with. Yes, like that, I'll give you, you an know? example. Yeah. Breakfast Club, great movie, classic movie, one of the greatest movies of all time. Yeah, but for a as kid. a kid, when I'm watching it, I'm identifying yeah. with the kids. Yeah, I want to slap all the kids. Yeah. like watching it now. Now as an adult. Yeah. I'm oh, watching I, I it. couldn't stand that movie. I was, I was like, oh, I'm you guys like, are being such like little punks. What the hell? Now I identify with the principal, the one that's like, young man, you're going to get the bull by the horns. Remember that guy? Now <laughs> yeah. I'm like, yeah, kick their ass. As a kid, I was like, what an asshole. Yeah, uh, yeah. You know what I mean? It changes They're everything. Just being little yeah. shit. Anyways, good, good, anyways good speaking show. of underwear, okay, you brought up thongs. Oh, Great train. I made, a, I made a huge uh, a huge change. This is monumental. <laughs> you changed, you changed you from get? purple to yeah, purple, no. purple thongs. Now you guys know for years. Lavender. For years, and I grew up wearing the the Speedo European. That's how I grew up, right? Wearing yeah, the Speedo European yeah. underwear. Well, we've seen it. I switched over to the boxer briefs. Whoa. No. Yeah, I did. I did. What made you do this? Sacrilege. You know, Are I you was just- like saggy butt now or something? No, no, I, no, my butt's actually- You're wearing like a full undershirt now too? Yeah, no. <laughs> no, no, no more wife beater? No, that'll never change. Okay. That all right, will never, all right, all ever, right. ever change. I just got nervous. No, I was just, you know, I was kind of getting just- I don't know what happened. I just felt like trying trying them on, see what happens. So I, I how's, bought a pair. How's the test drive going? You know, they're comfortable. They're really uh, they're a lot hotter, dude. There's mm. a lot more fabric. That's the only thing that I, I don't mean, like. I mean, does it hug them good? Still? Uh, it's it's good enough. Yeah. You know, because the speedos yeah. is have you uh, have is, you is, is, is secure you, and tight. You need some support there. You what, played, what are you doing? Have over you there? played with rotation huh? and stuff like that? How's that? You rotate? Yeah. No, I don't. Like a, I don't do like that, a that weird creepy arm <laughs> rotation. Get a call. You try, uh, hey, yeah. you look like a like a, like an old <laughs> hey. creep trying to say something to someone. Yeah. Hey, you want? I got another point. Yeah, you want to play around? Come here, <laughs> come here. Let me rub. Let me tell you something. A little bit. So no, I switched them out, and you know, part of the reason why I switched them out is when I first started dating Jessica, she told me that she liked boxer briefs and that she didn't necessarily like my speedo underwear. Now you know me; I don't give a shit. I'm gonna wear them anyway. Wow. But now later on, I'm like, maybe I'll change them and see what happens. See if she, you know, she gets see, excited. See, I thought that was like for the ladies. Yeah, no, know? no, it was for the comfort. Okay. It's not has nothing to do with the leg. I care yeah, less. I don't know. But now I'm wearing them right now. I, I was they're okay. Yeah, I was trying yeah. to figure it out. So now you guys aren't gonna see the lines anymore. That you guys always because you know, we're always oh, looking, right? Good, you guys are, just, 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 <laughs> you know, I want a nice, clean, you know, presentation. <laughs> All right, so we have to talk about the craziest thing ever that just happened. 
Okay. That just happened. Let's talk about this because uh, you had said that this is a massive conspiracy we just mm-hmm. missed. And I doubt it. How, like, what are we missing? Dude, so John McAfee, you guys know who he is, right? No, is, tell uh, me who he is. Is, so it, he's, is it McAfee or is it McAfee? McAfee, sorry. Yeah. He's the guy that invented McAfee virus. Uh, right. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. Billionaire, whatever. This guy's been on the run forever. Super controversial. Cool. Talks about how he has, first of all, they tried to charge him with some, some sexual assault stuff. Then he's doing some tax evasion. When they, when you, this guy does these videos where he talks about the government, how he's, he has this information on like top officials and he'll release right. it if he ever gets killed and I've all this crazy get, stuff. Get a tattoo saying that basically, you Dude. know, if, if he gets suicided, you know, that okay. it wasn't him. So he was put in a Spanish prison. He got caught because he was, been, he's been on the land making fun of the government. They can't find me. They can't, nobody can find me. Just talking shit. He's a wild kind of crazy guy, right? Okay, and again, wait, 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 re- wait, hold on. Go ahead. <laughs> oh no! Yes, yes, dude. Okay. Wait, uh, you're, hey, bro, your direction. Head, you gotta no, get your eyes no. forward, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there we go, bro. Yeah. Where'd you get that? <laughs> I just found it. That's amazing. Look at Anytime that. Anytime we talk about conspiracies, I was gonna go. Uh, yeah, you gotta be careful. It sounds great too. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah, you, get, <laughs> yeah. Right, you get the idea. Yeah. So, so no. So here's so here's the deal, right? So this guy's been talking about how the government does this thing and. You know, he talked about Epstein, and he's always revealing like very conspiracy, controversial shit. Okay. Talking about how he has all this information. Okay, okay. Now, real quick, because I don't know much about this guy. This is all he's known for is the being the antivirus guy, on and then computers. also being this like anti-government, anti like super conspiracy theory on the lamb. Like, and he looks yeah. like this guy looks like a, a maniac. And you should hear some of the stuff that he says. He's he's very entertaining, kind of crazy. Swack. Oh, yeah, dude. I mean, he's like, he has parties with a bunch of girls. He's all pro-drug. Weird, weird kind of guy. Very interesting. Anyhow, gets caught, in, and he's put in a Spanish prison to get extradited to the U.S. for tax evasion. He does a bunch of tweets leading up to this, saying stuff. I got to read some of these tweets, dude, because it's uh, they're, I got to find some of these tweets. But some of these tweets are saying like, hey, the way the government's talking to me, uh, I have a feeling they're going to suicide me. Hey, I will never kill myself. Here's a tattoo. And he puts, you know, whacked on his thing just to remind everybody. Then he says something like this. Check this out. I've collected files on corruption in governments. For the first time, I'm naming names and specifics. I'll begin with a corrupt CIA agent and two Bahamian officials coming today. If I'm arrested or disappear, 31 plus terabytes of incriminating data will be released to the press. In other words, he's saying, if I get killed... You guys, there will be a trigger that will be set, and then there'll be all this crazy information that's going to come out. Here's the crazy thing. <sighs> what? Here's the crazy thing. Hey, they, they imagine. Find, okay. They Hold find, on. They find him in his cell, hung himself, right? So he killed himself. And remember, he, he did a bunch of tweets saying, I will never do this. Killed himself in his cell. Right afterwards, his Instagram account posts a Q. Just a Q, like in other words, you like know, like he's going Q and on stuff, like it, almost like it's a trigger, like oh my okay, God. here we go, let the shit out. They got to me, bro. How this is this is like Epstein, but crazier. This is super deep state stuff. Yeah, because he's been talking about for a while how they're going to try and kill him. I was going to say now, it, it, will this still get labeled as conspiracy theory if a guy comes out? Like how much more? obvious that it's not a conspiracy that yeah. if he says like, if they try, i am not gonna do this yeah i am not going to kill myself i'm tattooing myself to remind yeah. you all in case i get uh, killed speaking of that he needs a, a new tattoo artist um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. not really impressed with that work. he's got to be a billionaire what's yeah, up yeah like come on he's got like tribal ugly tattoos well, now, now here's what works against he, him he looks broke here's what works against him he is that was in prison yeah, yeah. Well, here's the thing well he, no even though even, tat. Even, even his uh, even his suit and tie look he oh, looks bro, he's, broke he's, he's a lunatic now yeah. here's it that's the part that works against him is he's he comes Looks across like the banks he comes across as crazy so there'll be stuff that he'll say that's like oh nobody believes me life sucks like he's very up and down so he can yeah, come across as a bit yeah, crazy but don't you think that okay that's our perception because that's what we get from the media and what we get from google so if this guy is could get, get if the government can get to him don't you think too that all the photos that you find of him are going to look like this, mm, like yeah. right. I mean, if you if you have somebody like the CIA who's coming after this guy, they're also going to wipe out all of the stuff on online or in media that actually makes him look even semi normal for that exact reason that you just said right now. So mm-hmm. that the average person goes like, oh well, he looks 
fucking crazy. Mm. Mm. Of course he said some shit like that. I mean, listen to some of those tweets that he put what, out. What does DuckDuckGo say? Uh, well, I'm on I'm on there right now. So okay. here's some of the tweets he did. This is when he was in the there's, prison. There's the big Q right there. Oh, right? yeah. That got posted after he died or when he died or something. So, so check this out. This wow. is one of his tweets when he's in prison. I am content in here. I have friends. The food is good. All is well. <laughs> know that if I hang myself a la Epstein, it will be no fault of mine. This is... This is this is just tweets. That's the normal tweet. Bro, this is crazy to me. Look at this. Here's another one. Getting this is another tweet he put out. Getting subtle messages from US officials saying in effect, we're coming for you Mc, uh, McAfee. We're going to kill yourself. <laughs> I got a tattoo today just in case. If I suicide myself, I didn't. I was whacked. Check my right arm. Dude, wow. this is wild. Shit. Well, and yet, like, is anything, any investigation going to happen in that regard? Or Who's going to investigate like, it? Exactly. So that's the point. It's like, what what happens now? And so you said that there's going to be more information that's going to be leaked out. Well, I mean, that's, well, what, they're, that's what they're thinking, it, okay. you know, because like his death he might didn't have triggered say some, that? Well, how, how, hey, how scared to death are you as the 25-year-old reporter fresh out of college and he's told you like, hey, if I get whacked... You're gonna go share these files. Oh, <laughs> yeah. saying, and now it's on you to go on. <laughs> well, I mean, I mean, it's like oh, hot files. Yeah, a story that could like totally change your career, but at the same time, to change. And he you would constantly talk shit about how they can't find him, they can't catch him. Like, here's the thing: this is what I would yeah, think. Why taunt them? Now let's play. Let's let's play on the side of conspiracy theory. Let's say it was the deep state that killed him. I think that they would have found a way to stop this information from coming out first. Then once they found it, they said, we got it. Now we can take them out. What, right? do, you, wait, 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 what do you mean that if? Like you, you're actually, are, you think it's a possibility this guy hung himself? No, no, no. What I'm saying is if he got killed, if he got whacked. Which right, he did. Then I would think that the people who whacked him found where this information was going to be shared. Stop that first, right? Take care of that first because- uh. He set up a the, the 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 theory is that he set up a trigger. So like if I get killed, all you guys are going down. This shit's gonna get released. So I think that they would have found that first, stopped it, and then said, "All right, it's secure. We can take him out." Now. Or they were all part of that who who did that also. So then when nothing comes out, everyone goes like, "Oh, he was full of shit." Yeah. Mm. Oh, dude. You know what I'm saying? Mm. How? I mean, okay. So how blatant? Unless he's a total whack job and he's doing this on purpose and like, oh, when I die, everyone's gonna be real confused. Yeah. But how crazy would that be that you're calling it out and then they did it anyway? You yeah. know what I'm saying? That's well, a little scary. I Does mean, Hillary Clinton have no no? Yeah. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Dude, it's, I mean, it just seems a lot of it has been out in the public eye. It's just like it's whoever decides to actually look into it, you know, yeah. like that. Then, then you start raising questions, and then if you raise questions, you're immediately a conspiracy theorist. So, end of story. Oh, so I don't weird. know. How it's, you, it's a brilliant structure they have. I think if you label somebody a conspiracy theorist around this one, you you're kind of a moron. I mean, this yeah. person went to the lengths of tattooing that he wouldn't kill himself, and is saying this well before he dies and then he gets killed yeah. it's kind of like it's like epstein it's like oh the camera's yeah, but it's turned even, off it's oh, even the guards were it's asleep. even worse right i think epstein was obvious to us also but epstein didn't come out and say hey if i get killed tomorrow it's because someone killed or mm -hmm. I, I didn't commit suicide i would never do that right. had he done that too it would have made that even the problem obvious. is the whole crazy mm -hmm. side right or the crazy angle because they could always say well obviously he said that he's crazy yeah but you know what how much of that am i is, is that been since the beginning they've been promoting that right if you if you're the government and you're afraid that this guy is going to put out all this information you also would be filtering the stuff that others can see about I him mean, too maybe, wouldn't maybe. you uh, i mean to me i feel like that's the easy first step dude, is let's make him out to look crazy and not look normal by only letting this this stuff out you know to right. go viral oh, yeah. dude, terrifying it's terrifying that's, yeah. it's like they'll you get scrub you scrub all the information yeah so this just happened huh literally Wow. Literally just happened. Yeah. And wow. he was 75 years old, you know? And uh, but, I mean, when I saw it, I was like, oh, shit. So yeah. it's like making its rounds. So blatant. I know. Ugh. So we'll see if anything mm. gets released. But I think that they would have found a way to stop that before taking him out. Or he did commit suicide, and, and he was actually a lunatic. And I tell you what, he got, kind of did come across as a bit of yeah, a- Yeah, I heard he was like really eccentric. Like he was a very crazy, like did did a lot of like really interesting things. Yeah, very kind of a, he's a weird, weird, weird dude. In fact, at one point he ran as a libertarian uh, for, I don't remember what office or whatever. Which, by the way, I, I know I identify politically libertarian-ish, but I'll tell you something about the actual official libertarian party. <laughs> yeah. It's a bunch of fucking crazy- There's a little off. There's a reason yeah. why they never win. Yeah. There's a bunch of crazy people in there. Bunch of pot smoking- 
weirdo. <laughs> yeah, dude. Wasn't there some kind of like retreat, you know, for uh, libertarians? And it was like, it, it was wild dude, when I saw that. There's a guy that runs as a libertarian who wears a shoe on his head. And he's like a wizard or something. I think I'm, I'm, I'm not making sense. <laughs> his shoe on his head. Yeah, dude. It's, it's not. It's, oh. yeah. They're not going anywhere yeah. with, their, uh, with their lunacy. Anyway. Hey, did you guys, uh, let's switch gears here. Are you guys watching John Jones's progression in his training? Because he's bulking up, right? Yeah, he's with our buddy, yeah? Efforting. Yeah. Stan Efforting is mm -hmm. training him. Yeah. So he's, uh, I just, I'm going to send this to Doug. Maybe he can post it. How's he's he looking? Massive. Oh, really? Bro, he's like, like jacked, huh? He, he, dude, he went well, from, I'm going to send this to Doug right now. Doug, you can pull it up. There was controversy because before that he was like really focusing on deadlifting and, and a lot of the compound lifts and, and, you know, some people were criticizing that he was moving a little slower, uh, you know, in his next fight after that. So mm -hmm. I'm wondering if, you know, obviously he's addressed that, but I've seen him still lifting weights and and he's super functional he's right 255 now. right now his yeah. old weight that he would walk around at or whatever his fight weight was 225 right now he's at 255 he fights at a light heavyweight right yeah. not a heavyweight yeah, so yeah. He, he's, but right now he's walking around at 255 and he doesn't look like he's really fat does he, looks, he have a, oh, a fight right schedule yeah, see look at that look, at, look how big he is now here's the here's the challenge i don't know how stan is training him but i do know that stan his history is in powerlifting and bodybuilding, and so he's an expert at muscle hypertrophy. Yeah, really interesting for that to be the choice. Yeah, now here's the challenge. I don't know what Stan's athletic training background is, so I have no idea, so I'm speculating just based off of his own competitions. When you train a fighter who understands their body and knows how their body moves and is connected to their body, that's what happens when you're at an elite level, and you just pack a bunch of mass on them. No, I don't, don't, don't help at all. No, because you're in a new body. You're, yeah, you're not used to the same. To learn. Exactly. You're not used to the same mass and the same... The biomechanics change a little bit. The speed and the timing changes well, a little bit. Well, is this prepping him to to fight at heavyweight? Like, it, does he I'm not have sure. like yeah aspirations for that? I'm not sure, but I know part of the strategy was to get him big and strong. He has a he already has a fight that he, I think is scheduled, doesn't he? Check out to see who who it is. He's yeah. got he's got a fight scheduled, but that's a good question, Justin. I don't know if it's now. This would make sense if he's going that's into, what I'm, yeah. into the heavyweight division. No heavyweight. He's oh. going into heavyweight. Oh, so he is going to find the heavyweight. So that does yeah. make sense. So it does. Yeah, he needs to pack on a lot of weight, dude. He does, but... And he uh, can't... And technically, well, you can pack on too much, but... You, you got to be careful because I, I've done this to myself. I've seen other people do this where... Well, we've talked about... The, this is the most common question that we have to get... That we answer every single week, which mm -hmm. is this somebody wanting to get buff or stronger, but then they also have a sport that they play. Mm -hmm. And if you sacrifice the skill of your sport at all in pursuit of getting bigger, you'll get worse at your sport, mm -hmm. especially at this high of a level. At this high of a level, the, the amount of frequency, consistency that this guy has to do a, of his sport to maintain his level of excellence is extremely high. And if, if at all you take away from that to build muscle in pursuit to be bigger and stronger, it not only will it probably, it most certainly now here's will hinder why. his fighting. And here's why, because I know people watching right now are like, what are you talking about? Okay, so let's say you have a fighter that's really, really good, and he fights at a 200-pound body weight uh, in, a, in a class that's 200 pounds, and he gains 20 pounds of muscle, and now he's not fighting as good. Yes, he will still kick the crap out of 200-pounders. In fact, he might actually have an easier time with 200-pounders because he's a lot bigger and stronger. But that's not what happens in fighting. He went up to another weight class. So he's bigger and stronger, but now he's fighting other bigger, stronger guys yeah. who may be Who've more- lived in it for a while. Yeah, they yeah. may be more used to their body or they're stuff. Or they're two guys that have been 250 and they're or cutting- 270. Yeah, cut and down, they cut down to two, Which is usually the case. Yeah, yeah, and they had been doing that yeah. for years, so they're used to fighting at that point. So yeah, no, this is- uh, This is where that old man strength comes from. Like yeah. if you, you go wrestle your uncle that but you dude, can beat in the gym- John Jones is the GOAT. Like I, 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 he'll he'll figure it out, man. I, I don't know. I, my money would be in his direction yeah. in heavyweight. Well, movement. yeah, and I- and, you know, our our Stan is a smart guy. I'm sure John guy. Jones has got a camp full of his fight team. So I I I don't see them not knowing what we're talking sure. about. Sure, you know what I'm saying. Like this, this is not. Right. Um, no, we're just trying to explain it. Yeah, so I, I think that I, I'm excited. I'm very excited to see what what happens from it. I think it's really exciting for Stan. I really like Stan, yeah. and so. 
Um, and I like John Jones. John Jones is probably one of the most talented fighters. His only challenge is his his the mental side. He yeah. keeps fucking himself. Yeah. And it, it reminds me a lot of he, Mike he gets Tyson in his own way. Yeah, yeah. like yeah. it was like Tyson. Like Tyson, no, if no, Tyson no, no, had no, the no. mind of Muhammad Ali, and his, you know, he would have it would have been crazy. Now, don't you don't you feel though you have to factor that in when talking about them being great or not great? Though, sure. Right. Mm -hmm. Like it, some people say stuff like that. Like, oh, he would be the greatest if it wasn't for. But he's not. But he's not. Right. And he's not because of that. You're reason. not going to be balanced. And this exactly, not gonna and there's some people that are in, that's they're extremely smart the way they they fight, mm -hmm. and that's part of what makes them a great fighter. Is there? I mean, that's there's a part of the IQ IQ fighting is is, is part of the deal. It's just yeah. like any sport, right? Like, yeah. there's guys that I know that like in football or basketball that are not the most physically dominant, but then their IQ is so high they're considered one of the greats. Well, they read Dude. the whole game. They tell you what could happen at any given moment. So I had a pretty uh, awkward phone call last night. I was like, so Courtney's out of town and was like staying down in San Diego with her sister. And uh, like, I was just sitting on the couch by myself and like trying to take care of the dogs and everything. And um, I get this FaceTime. And so I got the FaceTime and um, Courtney like, is there an answer? But she's there with like all these other ladies and every one of them were like, like three sheets to the wind, you know, <laughs> <laughs> they're just having a good time. And I'm like, Oh, Hey, <laughs> and, and they're trying to introduce themselves on FaceTime to me. And she's kind of passing it around. I'm like, Oh, yeah, hi sh shirtless after a workout or something. Yeah, yeah. Well, no, I was just sitting on the couch. And so one of the, one of the ladies is just like, Oh, where's your other hand? <laughs> you know? Oh and I'm god. like, Oh my god. god, this is what I'm dealing with. Right. And so I just was like, all right, okay, I'm going to play this. So I, I turn it down. I had, I had, had uh, my little wiener dog on my lap. And I was like, oh, it's right on my wiener. You know, <laughs> and I'm petting it like wow. this. Wow. Wow. You know, ladies. And I was like, this is the most awkward conversation I've ever had with people I don't even know. You know? And then, like, I was like, how do I get out of this? Yeah. Uh, what was Courtney saying the whole time? She was just like, just turning red. And, and like, she, I don't know. She thought it would, was going to be a funny idea to include me in. And I'm like, that was a terrible if idea, honey. Don't ever do that again. You know what's funny? This is like a little, this is like, a, like an untold secret, I think. If you're ever, a, if you're a guy and you're around a bunch like a group of women that outnumber you yeah. and they're drunk oh, they get it's intimidating they get really bad yeah, they get really dirty they're and, like raunchy <laughs> and yes aggressive because they feel confident like, you're by yourself there's a whole bunch of them yeah. and they just say shit and you're just like wow this <laughs> is like, yeah. I'm like I don't even know you and you guys are like yeah yeah, they're, know, co they're coming in hot dude I, you know what was the worst was when I god I, I'm thinking back now I'm starting to get all these memories could you As, imagine if the roles were reversed on that how awkward that it would never it would, you know, yeah, you uh, met a group of guys. You'd be in jail just for that. piling of on. Course. Yeah. No way. <laughs> yeah. Of course. That's because guys yeah. are terrible. But I, I remember, I'm thinking back now, as a young trainer, 18 years old, as a personal trainer in the gym, and I remember some of the clients that I would have, these women in their 40s, or even members that would see me regularly, oh my God, they were terrible. Yeah. Some of the shit that they would say to me, I couldn't believe. I had a lady uh, would slap my ass every time I walked by her. She's like a 40-year-old I woman. had a manager that did that to me when I was working at Red Robin. She was just like, oh, hey, how's my handsome whatever? And she'd be like, Psh, like just slap me in. Like, <laughs> wow. I'll meet you in the cooler. Psh. No way. Like, hey, no one wants to, hey, no one wants to talk about how it happens oh, the other, the oh, other way, a, too. It's socially acceptable. You should yeah. start a Me Too Well, that's movement. because she's I not, should, that's you know? she's not going to, because you don't feel threatened. Let's be honest. Did you feel threatened, Justin? No. No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's what, no, that's that, and that's no. the part, you know. Yeah, that's I'm, why I'm, like, I'm being playful yeah, and funny by saying that, right? Because right. I do understand that. Yeah, because if it was a big dude that, well, did that to you, I, you'd feel a little uh, different hey, about Kyle it. Kyle Kingsbury, I remember that experience oh, for me? Oh, yeah. I'll never forget that. And I, and, and I, it, it gave <laughs> Tell me. Tell the whole story. That's, yeah, well, it gave me a whole new understanding uh, of what it probably feels like for women and why it is so different for women than it is men is because there is a real physical threat that that could happen. So yeah, if a yeah. little five foot one, one fifteen pound girl grabs my ass, mm -hmm. it's not very scary because I know I could physically palm her with my hand yeah. and, and keep her away if I want to. But you know, if the roles are reversed for a girl, when that happens, it's extremely intimidating. And I felt that for the first time when <laughs> yeah. we met Kyle. I remember so that. a nice, loving embrace. Yeah, I mean, back. Kyle Kingsbury, you know, he's an MMA fighter, black, big dude. Yeah, black top. belt, MMA, badass, super strong. Great guy to buy, the way. Six we foot love, four, 230 pound, just monster. And, you know, he's a very fun and flirtatious and he's not, uh, you know, he doesn't <laughs> doesn't prefer one sex over the no, other. He's, and he's we having fun. We were in the uh, coffee shop one of the first times we ever hung out and met, and he did a real like a you know low back reach around on me, and it was very long time. <laughs> 
the and look he, on your face. And he kinda, <laughs> you looked at me. Hey, you looked at me and Justin, and me and Justin were like, "Hey, bro, yeah. the best we could do is call Dude, the police." Because we're, we're like, "Sal, Adam's been claimed." Because <laughs> <laughs> he could cold you down. Yeah, yeah and, his way. and I went flush, and you know, probably just like I'm sure uh, women have felt that have had similar situation is, what do I do? Yeah, do I make a big deal about it and then potentially get penned, and then uh, then he's gonna? <laughs> or you just smile like, <laughs> yeah, or like, like skirt, pretend like I kind of like it, it but yeah. I don't, or do I just give this look, you know, like that all of a sudden starts swirling around in your head and that yeah. has that never happened to me before. And so that I never d- happens and I, you get whatever, just shit your pants. Yeah. They'll just leave you alone. <laughs> yeah, right. Just, yeah, right away. It's <laughs> a good move. Oh yeah. man. I don't want to touch this guy it's anymore. Escape move. Yeah. Anyway, speaking of, uh, of disgusting things, <laughs> did you guys hear about this journalist that took a subway sandwich, a tuna fish subway san- sandwich and got it DNA tested? So he tested the tuna and you know what they found? What was the, Oh what, my God, is it a different species? They found no tuna. What? They Disgusting. found no Disgusting. No tuna DNA at all. Dude, they I've seen okay, and I'll roll it. What? In, but <laughs> I've seen I've seen what does meat that, mean, that bro? they squeeze out of a tube. Uh it's like dude. So so now here's the thing. I think hasn't Subway already gotten in trouble for this dude, bullshit before? It, it's so nasty. Uh, yeah, so it's, it's already uh, terrible that they're like ninety uh, percent bread and like ten percent meat. Yeah. Well, so what then the, was it? Was it like in a lab? Like, like, well, so so here's what, so it says a weekend New York Times report took a look at what goes into the eateries tuna offering. So t- talking about Subway, and even had some sandwiches tested by a lab. The Times said that the lab found no identifiable tuna DNA in the tuna sandwiches. The papers. Had tested. Now here's none, the deal. None, <laughs> no. not even like a no. like a pixie dust. At least supplement companies pixie dust. The I shit mean, in there. is it another fish or what are we dealing with I don't, here? This I don't. I don't. I have no meat? idea. Now here's the thing. I, I don't know if so. Here's the defense. The defense from Subway. They're saying this. Once the tuna has been cooked, its DNA becomes denatured, which is true, meaning that the fish's characteristic properties have likely been destroyed, making it difficult, if not impossible. To identify. Now, here's why I'm, I'm leaning towards Subway. Mm. This is why I'm leaning towards Subway. Because you ate a lot of tuna sandwiches. <laughs> oh, fuck, <I> love, <laughs> love that tuna. Yeah. <laughs> no, because what would you replace it with? Tuna is relatively cheap. It wouldn't make any sense to replace it with another fish because other fish is more expensive. So what would they, you know, what are the benefit? Is, is, is it the most or the yeah, cheapest? Just, it's very inexpensive. Really? Tuna fish is very inexpensive. What's the cheapest fish, Doug? <laughs> I feel like I, I feel like mackerel. Cod. I know. I no. I think like mackerel uh, or catfish. Those are all cheaper. They are, but when you're not I think when you're they put cod in fish sticks. Not when That's you're they, not when you're doing it in mass. And also, I don't think you could you could make cod. For example, look up tilapia. Like, maybe no. Yeah, tilapia is cheap too. Cheapest fish by the pound. Yeah, yeah. but it's, I mean, but, but it would have to taste and look like it's tuna. Probably though. chicken gizzards. Well, I mean, you put enough mayonnaise and other do- stuff like do- that. You can dolphin just meat. Get, it's dolphin meat. What it wouldn't be hard to do is to make some no. artificial flavoring that's supposed to taste like tuna and then put it on the cheaper fish. So there, that it could be the hack, dude. It could be hmm. another fish that's much cheaper to purchase than tuna. It just it just doesn't make sense. I don't know. I'm you could buy right now, you right? could buy tuna in bulk. You have easy distribution. I don't think it's as easy with other well, fish products. Well, this is, the, I mean, this is just one of those things you start to really have to consider with fast food. Like, how are they able to maintain these these profit margins well, at dude, low prices? You want to get, you know, it's like then you look at something like Taco Bell. They got under fire for their meat. Uh, What's here, Doug? Back. Tilapia. So tilapia is cheaper. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. what is to stop them? Okay, and you're talking about a place like Subway, where we're talking about probably millions of pounds of fish yeah. that they're moving a month, right? Could you, would you think that tilapia is tuna? You'd have to add more shit to it. All you have to do is add a flavoring. Once it's all chopped up and mixed in their little mix of onions and relish and mayonnaise and everything else in that, you don't think it would be hard to disguise mm. a different kind of fish as, as tuna? I guess. I mean, they maybe. also say canned fish is the cheapest. There you go. So there you go. But yeah. is it, but when they buy it, is it is it bought? I doubt it's bought in the can. Well, how do you? What do you, you think they're buying? They're buying a one tuna and then doing no, it themselves. No, I imagine they buy it mass, like a huge large can. Yeah. Like, <laughs> or, so their argument <laughs> 55 is fifty-five gallon drum. Yeah, that's <laughs> what I, I mean. I would seriously, it would be like that, wouldn't you think? They're uh, not buying by a can. What do you think they have a little fucking I mean, can, can opener in the back I, like this? I'll, <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Come yeah. on, Steve. We got twelve more fucking tuna sandwiches. Yeah. I, I You're tell you, this up, Steve. I tell you what, I wouldn't feel that bad knowing that I was eating tilapia instead of tuna, though. You know what I mean? It's not that big of a deal to me. You know what I mean? Well, that's probably most likely because what else is it? Cat? 
Exactly. Squirrel. Wow. You know? Well, Ugh. so you want to talk about squirrel. Squirrel is really bioavailable everywhere. Yeah. yeah. So you want to hear about something that's uh, it's this supposed is, to be tasty. This too, is also though. gross. Yeah, they, Do you know that, that food it. regulations? I'll tell you something gross. Food this. regulations allow a certain amount of like rat feces yeah. and rat hair in your ketchup, regular food. Your ketchup is like that. Yeah. Your ketchup has a certain amount of and dead ra- dead rats and bugs that it allows. Yeah, because yeah. it's impossible to yeah, eliminate. It's it. impossible. They so they have a threshold. Yeah. So you literally, if there's some in there. So is milk, everything's totally. like that. Wow. Yeah, dairy's like that, everything's like that. Because it's protein. impossible. You have this, you're, you're, you know, these massive, you know, tanks with thousands and tens of thousands of gallons. Of course, a rat or a bug or a fly gets in there. So it is. It's okay. You can only have so much, which mm. is kind of gross when you think That's about it. That's gross. You worked in some of these big yeah. uh, food factories and yeah, stuff, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I remember you saying when you worked in the whey protein place, yeah. how it wasn't like the way that you throw it in the- oh, You didn't measure it or it's anything? It's not regulated. It <laughs> fell on the floor, scoop it right back in. <laughs> oh, it. It was, there's no, it was like a bunch of teenagers in an assembly line running things like that. Two for them, one for me. You know I mean, saying? it's no different once you make it into the restaurant industry so uh, I, I mean I had some yeah. experience there seen it opened my eyes with all this stuff and then at the dairy same thing you know what I'm saying yeah. like oh shit the fly went oh, oh well you know, squirt squirt <laughs> oh, no, no. Yeah, stir it's it up awful, stir dude. it up you know what I'm saying God, <laughs> yes. that's why I'm always super nice to the waiter or the waitress yeah. because I know do it. I worked yeah. in restaurants oh, yeah. I know dude if they go in the back like they can do anything they There's, want to your food that's it man and yeah. I don't you don't want it to keep going back I'll tell you that right now really oh yeah is that when yeah. shit's what's the oh, worst thing you ever seen oh my well, I mean, there's been hairs <laughs> from certain areas sprinkled in salads. Oh, oh uh, no. Yeah, there's been, uh, anyways, dude, I don't want to get into it. It's really gross. But, like, <laughs> you know, there's been stuff from your nose that made it in. Oh, uh, God. Yeah, certain sauces. Oh. It, but yeah. like stuff like I would like I just was a I, I was never a part of that because that's just awful. It's yeah. just being awful human being. I feel like it's being a coward. That's why I would never it, do it. it. Like if I don't like you, I'm gonna do it to your face. Not gonna. But do I just it know that there's yeah. people out there that exist that do stuff like that. That's oh, what I know for sure. Yeah, and they're getting paid minimum wage after garlic the hides all that. I think so. huh? <laughs> <laughs> more hot sauce, please. <laughs> more <laughs> hot sauce. It's gotta more kill, kill most yeah. of the bacteria. Hey, dude, speaking so speak- of shit, oh, I, what happened? I, I got shit on. Saturday. What? Like literally. Lip, wait, wait. Someone shit on you? Bird shit on oh, me. Bird. Oh, I haven't had that happen in so long. You know, that's good luck. Is it? I was going to ask that. That's so, why I brought it up. So who made that up? Look it up, Doug. Italians. Huff. Tell me. What does Italians it mean? Italians turn everything bad luck into good luck. <laughs> if, if you step in shit or a bird shits on you, uh, all right. I guess I to, make it, that. to make it like not bad, like, hey, good luck. I was, at, hey. money, I was at the wedding and I we just changed. I just put a white shirt on, getting ready to head out to go get something to eat with Katrina. And we're walking down the street for not even two minutes and boom, look over my shoulder and big old bird shit right on my oh, shoulder. Bro. <laughs> yeah, a bunch of fucking seagulls over there. That happened to me on my hair. Laguna Beach. Time. That was brutal. Yeah, yeah. dude. That What's beach. it say, Doug? What am I going to get? Uh, I don't know. Besides I mean, a, a I switched to duck, duck, go, and I'm not sure it's good for me for finding things quickly. Mm. Oh, is bird, just we'll put, is bird poop system. good luck? That's well, that's what I put. Oh, and right. now I got a bunch of articles that oh, don't geez, really uh, say anything definitive to me. I know it's Duck, duck goes not very good, huh? Mm. Well, at least no. I heard that. That's why I was asking. Though. The reason why I brought it up was that exact reason because I was hoping I'd get some. I have some good luck. See, now the cool life. thing is if it goes on your head, boom, baby wipe gone because you don't have hair. So yeah, the shirt clean. though get was the Gorbachev. Just <laughs> the, shirt, yeah. the shirt was a problem though. Yeah, you know? dude, so well, I'm be, lucky though. Money, you think? You think it's money, huh? I, anything having to do with shit. I, this is what my parents thought. You step in shit, you get shit on. You're supposed to get money. Come on, Doug. The suspense wow. is killing me right oh, now. Oh, okay. What am I going to get, <laughs> man? I want to- Yeah, there's a sense when a bird poops on you, it is transferring its prosperity. Oh. So <laughs> you're probably going to get rich now. Wow. Uh, that was, <laughs> wow. But I don't know That's if it's Italian as as or where the cookie. origin is. But uh, I know All I know is my family would always say it. Yeah. There seems to be before. a lot of people who say that it is good. Oh, yeah. So you're probably yeah. okay. Well, think about it. The odds, right? No. So, I mean, you're lucky just yeah. to get that. This is true. You know what I'm saying? I so, felt a little bit, too. Yeah. yeah. It ruined my I, clam I chowder I was eating, yeah. but other than that, I oh. felt like, yeah, I was literally eating clam chowder. I'm like, this has just got not good yeah. now. What do they call those astrological signs? Like the the, the whole- like, Zodiac? Yeah, I'd rather go with the Zodiac, uh, what they have to say for me today. Yeah. They get shit on. Yeah, well, Adam, don't remember, don't make fun of that. Adam actually- uh, yeah, Oh, yeah, he believes true. in that. I forgot. Those yeah, are real. Yeah, yeah, sorry. You ever read them? Go to- It always- Yeah, there's always something it's, in there you can identify Anybody who with. denies this, I challenge you, Okay. Go back. Everybody, <laughs> listen here. Listen, <laughs> listen, Linda, okay? If you don't believe these things- It's in the stars, this you is, guys. This is what confirmed it for me, so this will work for you, too. Everybody has dated a crazy 
girlfriend or boyfriend, right? So go back. They're always Scorpio. Look up what their <laughs> what, look up what their birth Scorpio. date was. Okay, look up what their birth date was. You can find this online. You can find like a how I match with. It's other. not my fault. I'm a Sagittarius. Listen, I'm a Sagittarius. <laughs> put this in your birth are. date. Put in their birthday and look up how you match, and you'll see like. I bet you it just describes the drama in your relationship, like to a T. Like whatever, whatever was going on with that person, like you, you do that, and you're like, whoa, what science. I, what are your signs yeah, again? Yeah. You're Aquarius, like I am. Yeah, Aquarius. And what are you again? Scorpio. Scorpio. That's right. That's my daughter. We're the my daughter. water people. Yeah, Aquarius yeah. is apparently, uh, I think, something like Highly 90. intelligent, and I think uh, maybe you can look this up. Very, it's yeah, very true. Charismatic. You can look this up. I think I something like 90 percent of the people in the American Hall of Fame are Aquarians. Did you guys know this? Well, of course. Look that up, Doug, because I think that's a true statistic. What? Now that's weird 90 percent <laughs> in the hall of fame like in the that american, I'm getting in, that on this action. in the american hall of fame if i was only italian what is know? the american hall of fame for what sport i have no idea what it is yeah that's just, it sounds know. made up it no, does sound made up <laughs> no, no the, the american hall of fame listen I mean, there's a like a, a the american <laughs> doesn't get more generic than that <laughs> yeah, yeah 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 <laughs> I went to the American College <laughs> yeah, yeah, University. Yeah, yeah. Oh, really? <laughs> the University of School. Yeah. I, okay. Here we go. I just I'm looking. I had a liberal right. arts degree. Uh, I can't find it. Cool story. Yeah, that's I some can't. bullshit. Some Hall of Fame anyway. Yeah. yeah. Something about that about, ain't that ain't accurate. Some about Aquarians being awesome. Aquarians. Yeah. Or Aquarius? Aquarius. 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 My Aquari- bad. <laughs> Aquaman. <laughs> what is an Aquarian? On, we even have a song. Isn't that dude. an instrument? What's an Aquarian? Aquarian? Uh, yeah. it's like I a, have no idea. Accordion. It's, accordion. Like, a, it's like an instrument and a fish had sex. That's what it is. That's what an aquarium. <laughs> Can you imagine the noises that would make? <laughs> it's like half whale, half like uh, blowhole. Mama mia, I, I, I dropped my accor- accordion into the water. Uh, it's, an, it's an aquarium now. <laughs> it does just, both. And 90% of those are in the Hall of Fame. Yeah, I don't wow. know. In case you're wondering. Speaking of water, Oof. so I was at, uh, yesterday I did uh, Mark Bell's podcast, right? So I drove all the way up to Sacramento. Sacramento, and I'm in there, and I did the the, the what, what's this podcast called? Power uh, Power, Power Project. Project. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, Ooh. great guy. Love Mark Bell. Very nice. Very uh, hospitable. Everybody, everybody there was super awesome. But I go in there, and I, you guys know me. I always pay attention to the supplements that people have around in their office, and oh, yeah. that's like a place of power lifter. I mean, there's some massive beasts in there. Uh, in fact, <laughs> I went in there, and I felt very small. Um, but I see supplements, and I see a bunch of element. So Element T, one of the products. Oh, they got some over there? A ton, right? Oh, awesome. So I asked him, and I said, have you noticed- Yeah, what do they think about it? Exactly. I said, would, have you noticed any difference in drinking, uh, you know, in increasing your sodium? He's like, and now remember, Mark Bell does Carnivore. a very, very low carb type yeah. of diet. Oh, yeah. He's like, it's huge, dude. Huge. Pumps, strength. Especially him. Energy. Everybody was drinking uh, their product. And then we started talking about the potential success of this company. You know, it's funny. This is This is true now. There's three components that make things very palatable, right? Salt, Mm -hmm. sugar, and fat. Okay. So when you drink Gatorade, you got a lot of sugar in there, and it tastes really good. Uh, Gatorade has electrolytes also, not nearly as much sodium as Element T. And we've talked about why that's beneficial for athletes and people who eat low-carb diets or people who have uh, non-processed food type diets. You probably need more sodium in your diet if you're one of those people. The high sodium content of Element T is why it's so damn hyper palatable. Because as I'm drinking it and it's sugar free, yeah. like this is way better than sugar free any other drink, and it's because it's so high in sodium. So yeah. we were talking about it. I'm like, oh my god, that yeah. there's like an unintended brilliance in their formulation. No, hundred percent. I, I don't know if it's like unintended. I'm sure I, you got to think that was, that was intentional. I'm sure they maybe were, because they didn't do the sugar. You got to make up, and you're probably not going to add fat into something yeah. like that. Yeah. So I imagine that. Yeah, because Gatorade when they first started out was very much like you know electrolyte driven, and it was and like higher chalky, sodium. and yeah, and it was higher, and they just moved away from that, and it got mainstream, and it's like high fructose corn syrup and everything else they'll, well, they'll throw in there. What, wasn't it invented for the University of Florida? Florida, yeah, because every, I mean the humidity is insane like i i experienced that just going into st louis uh for one of my first football games the midwest and i literally lost 10 pounds before i even touched the field wow yeah, it was wow. just i just would sweat i wasn't used to it i didn't acclimate to it so and that it was crushes crazy. your performance crushes i was like i i was like basically dizzy throwing up it was awful oh you got that bad yeah oh wow speaking of our partners if i don't i think i've I've shared this maybe once on the podcast before and i know i've posted it on my instagram at least once um but last night watching uh watching the new episode of loki i went down and uh 
Yeah, because you guys remember I talked about how I got like you know forty boxes of uh, blueberry yeah. Uh, yeah. magic food yeah. or whatever. Yeah, and so and fruity is like my favorite. So fruity's number one, and then I'd say blueberry's number two. But I've 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 gone through all the fruity and now I'm on to blueberry. But what I forgot, which is amazing, and somebody in our forum first turned me on to this, and that is bananas sliced up in the blueberry is the most amazing combination really? you've ever had. So if you haven't done- What kind of so milk So mainly that, not with the fruity, the blueberries, the move with that. Blueberries with the banana. The blue, the banana and blueberry uh, mixed okay, together. I have, a, I have a box of blueberry. I'm about to try now, that. What, do you, what kind of milk do you use? Are you almond milk or do you go regular milk? So I'm normally almond milk, although last night I was actually drinking uh, 2% because Katrina gets mad when I drink the whole milk for Max because it's the whole raw milk. Who's drinking the 2% normally? Uh, our our uh, nanny. Oh, I see. Yeah, so she had it in there. So, so you stole her. Yeah, stole her. <laughs> well, it's either that or get yelled at by the wife because I'm drinking Max. She gets yeah. mad. I would normally drink Max's, but Na she's like, nanny has got to take that one. Yeah, exactly. You take one for <laughs> one the One of them team. works for you. Yeah. 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 The other one's your wife. Yeah. That's so, it. So you can't. Priorities. So I drank Rose's now, milk last now, night. Now, when you eat a banana in public by itself. I don't eat bananas by themselves. <laughs> Why? That's just for where you're heading right now. Really? I do, I do not eat bananas. Bananas. I I'm, have never ate so bananas. You just don't if like I the, do, I do it really slow and just I'm lean actually, into it. I'm actually know? not a I'm not a big <laughs> you throw it real quick just, and then, Oh yeah, just you know like I actually don't like music. bananas by themselves at all. I do I would never just eat a banana. I don't like the taste really? of them. But banana in like smoothies or like yeah. magic spoon cereal. Yeah, like that's true. the banana mixed with stuff that's is true. amazing. Yeah. So I yeah. love and banana protein shakes. Yes, I love there, banana yeah. flavored stuff if it's like a in a flavored drink or whatever, but I do not like bananas. No, I, by so I like bananas either. and and I remember when I'd go to work with my dad, we would always bring you know, sometimes we'd have fruit or, and salami or meat or whatever. And I remember watching my dad eat it and he would he never would bite the banana. He'd always cut off the piece and eat it with so his much knife. More manly. Yes. Yeah. And I remember like every guy I knew in my family That's the they ate a banana yeah, that, that way. That is the move. But as a kid, you don't know, you know, so I'm like, yeah. why are you guys eating bananas that way? Why don't you just put it in your mouth? I eat, just, I eat as apples. you grow up, like, I eat oh, apples I know, like that. I get it. I now. carve it and with yeah, knife. yeah, yeah. Just but the banana part. That's, I mean, I get that. Yeah, right? you don't uh, put that. I, yeah, I don't even need. You don't want to do it like Justin said. I, you know. <laughs> yeah, Justin, like when he eats a banana, whatever, dude. If you want to stare, I'll give you something. To look at Justin eating a banana is almost as awkward as watching you hip thrust. It's like <laughs> it's right up there. <laughs> to me, I'm waiting one day. I'm gonna walk in. Justin's eating a banana, and you're hip thrusting. I'm just gonna fucking walk. You can right only back, dream of that, right happening. back outside. Like, <laughs> or if I do both it. at the same the time, the end of mind pump. <laughs> yeah. Hey, real quick. I hope you're enjoying the show. Head over to mindpumpfree.com and check out all of our free stuff. You can get all kinds of free giveaways, including guides and information on how to develop more muscular arms, a flatter midsection, a better squat, uh, how to burn body fat more effectively. We even have guides for personal trainers. Mindpumpfree.com. All right, enjoy the rest of this podcast. Our first caller is Santiago from Ecuador. Santiago, how can we help you? Hey, guys. So basically my question is, uh, I just finished MAPS Anabolic. I'm right now doing MAPS Performance. I'm doing a three day away, a phase one. So it's three days a week. I'm currently uh, wearing a wearable that tracks my sleep, my uh, recovery, et cetera, my heart rate. So my question is, if it would make sense to add another day if my recovery is, is good. No, that's that's a really good question, and it's a trap that a lot of us uh, fall into when we're getting into fitness. So the optimal dose of exercise for maximum results is not the same as the upper tolerable limit of exercise that your body can withstand. So in other words, you might be able to withstand more exercise, you might be able to withstand more stress, but that's not going to get you to your goal any faster. In fact, it may actually slow down and oftentimes does slow down your progress. And also it takes another tool off the table because at some point, if you come really advanced, you may need to add extra exercise just to get your body to progress even further. So don't fall into this trap. If you're progressing, you feel good, performance is improving, you're stronger, don't add more just because you think you can. Uh, leave it alone. Don't fix what's not broken. Allow your body to adapt uh, and improve. Now, that being said, if he's been doing this for a while and he and he's at a plateau uh, and he's got great recovery, great sleep, that is an option. But I think it shouldn't be the first option, mm. right? I think that before you – the last place I ever wanted to – is to add more more training days to my clients. So, mm -hmm. like, we, we want to manipulate exercise and programming 
uh, and nutrition and and do things like that and movement throughout the day. I want to play with all those things first before I say, hey, now let's add another day. Just because you're you're adding another day of exercise that you're now pretty much committing yourself to if you want to maintain whatever that physique is that you build. So, well, did you just start Maps Performance like recently? How long? Yeah, yeah, like. I'm finishing phase one this week. Oh, yeah. Buckle yes. up. So, yeah, that's the thing. I mean, you're starting an entirely new stimulus, and, and your body's going to respond just because it's different than what you've been doing before. So, I don't know. Give it a chance to, to sort of develop and, and, and ride it out. So, if you are still getting results right now, I mean, I would focus on just, you know, the benefits of what you've experienced so far and the strength of it. Yeah, and, and, and performance – progressively adds volume anyway. Oh, so, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, oh, yeah. It's all in there. Yeah, phase two, phase three, and so on. You're going to get more and more volume. So just hang on, hang tight, uh, and let the program uh, get your body where you want it to go. Awesome. Thanks, guys. Nope. And the second part of my question is, uh, I, I've been focusing a lot more on performance rather than aesthetics. I've been following your advice, and I'm enjoying it more. So my question is, what program would it be beneficial to follow after I'm done with performance hmm. to keep focusing more on a strong, 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 strong or power lift? Yeah, I'd yeah. say map strong. Let's yeah, go map. Yeah, map also, you can only ask one question. So I was going to give you a free program, but <laughs> you're not going to get a free. <laughs> yeah, just, I'm just kidding. No, <laughs> ruined it. Yeah, Sa Santiago, I'm going to send you map strong. Okay. Yeah. Follow that after maps performance. You're going to love Map strong. It's funny. We created Map strong, and we didn't really have expectations that it would explode the way it did. People did it, and they it's become one of the favorite programs that people follow. Powerlift like, would be great yeah. too, though, because I mean, Powerlift is literally designed to bring up your all those four major lifts. So yeah. if you want something that about all about performance, yeah. I mean, that's not, bare bones. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it gets right after. But we're gonna we're gonna shoot Map strong over to you, okay, Santiago? Awesome. Thank you very much, guys. I nope. Appreciate it. No problem, man. Yeah, that's the that's the trap that I fall into every single time. Everybody does that. I, I work out and I'm like, oh shit. I, I can feel you more. get antsy. Yeah. Like I, I just think he's probably like feeling good and like wants to just keep going. Well, you know and what part of, after it. You, know you also got it. That's how you, it's also how you find that out though, too, right? You keep doing it? Well, no, 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 <laughs> yeah. no. No. Because no, I still haven't figured it out. <laughs> what I do like is that he has he has a tool. And by the way, this is the better way to use these tools too, right? It's not like, oh, it says I'm great, so I should just necessarily do more and do more. It's now, now I have a baseline that I've been measuring for yeah. a while. Now let's see what happens when I decide to ramp up my intensity, excuse me, add another day, something like that. And yeah. then let's go back to this tool that I have and see, do I get a positive benefit from it or does it negatively impact my sleep and my recovery? And that should give you your answer of if you're going in the right direction or not. So. Yeah. You know what the big challenge is with this is there's two. One is I want to get faster results, mm. but then here's the other one that's even harder. And this is the one that I struggle with. It's not necessarily that I want to get faster results. I've been working out for so long that adding even a little bit additional performance is like a miracle because I've been doing this for so forever, and I'm not I'm on the other end now of uh, you know 35 right. So it's not like my body's going to continue to progress forever. But it's I love working out. So if I think I can add another workout and I love that hour workout, then my tendency is to add more exercise. Yeah. But oftentimes that's uh, self defeating. So right. it's something that is, fitness fanatics in particular struggle with. Our next caller is Kate from California. Hey, Kate. How can we help you? Hi, guys. Thanks for answering my question. I really appreciate it. Yeah, let's go. Yeah. Um, so I started weightlifting probably like five years ago. Um, and at the time, I was very active in Brazilian jiu-jitsu. Um, so the training that I did really was just to complement um, my martial arts. Uh, since then, I have um, not been training um, so much in BJJ. And I just want to focus more on my physique. Um, I've never followed a structured program. So I was really interested in um, choosing one of the MAPS programs. Um, and I had my eye on anabolic. I have a question though, um, as regards the, um, what do you guys call it? Like the little extra add-on programs. The MAPS mods. The mods. Yes. Yeah. Um, my shoulders are something that I really want to see some more development in. So I was wondering if I could add one of um, the shoulder mods to uh, MAPS Anabolic. You could, but I would, if I had my choice with you, I would actually prefer you go anabolic, mm -hmm. then aesthetic uh, in that in that order. And then in aesthetic, you'll actually get a, an opportunity to... Um, make shoulders your focus. I just think you'll get great benefits in your shoulders just from run, running anabolic and before throwing more volume on it uh, with like a mod or just trying to add more, like 
follow the program and then transition into a program that was designed to sculpt and bring yeah. up body parts. Okay, are you still doing Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu or anything else, or is this going to be pure now resistance training? Um, it's pretty much pure resistance training. Um, I have about four or five days during the week that um, I do like to um, go to the gym. Um, I do cycling and running on the side, but that's more like a fun thing for me. Okay, yeah, so uh, I'm, I'm with Adam. MAPS Anabolic, now that you have the choice in MAPS Anabolic, to do two or three foundational workouts a week. Uh, I would recommend that you do three. And then the trigger sessions, if you want, you can focus on your shoulders with the trigger sessions on right. the days mm -hmm. in between. And you should see significant progress uh, with strength, muscle, and, and body sculpting. So let's go in that direction. After you do MAPS Anabolic, the three foundational workouts, the trigger sessions, after you complete it, then move to MAPS Aesthetic, like Adam said. And then let's let's see what happens to your body. But I think you're gonna I think you're gonna do phenomenal. You're gonna see a lot of great results, especially if you really focus on those trigger sessions, hitting them multiple times a day, which yeah. I, a lot of people don't really read that part. And I want to emphasize that because you're gonna get that recovery, and and also it's gonna it's gonna help you to to boost your performance going into the next workout. Yeah. Now you said you don't have maps anabolic, correct? I do not. No, I was. Uh, I've been. I've been scrolling through all the programs and right. going, okay, which one's for me? Well, um, well, Kate, I want you to check under your chair right now. <laughs> <laughs> My cat's there. You get a program. <laughs> yeah. We're sending MAPS Anabolic to you for free. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Everybody you. gets <laughs> MAPS. <laughs> All right. So uh, we're, we're going to send that over to you and then follow it like we just said. And yeah. please keep in touch. Let and, us know what your progress and is. And more, like. more specifically, good, yeah, that's, that's, uh, more specifically <laughs> with the trigger sessions, I think I would actually do uh, – <laughs> So when you do your trigger sessions, you'll see, and listen, watch the videos, uh, make sure, here's a mistake everybody thinks that trigger sessions are like another workout. The intensity level is supposed to be a lot lower. You're not trying to- you're just you're, getting a pump. That's right. You're just kind of getting a pump. But when you do it, because shoulders are a focus, what I would have you do as a client is I'd say, hey, I want you to do rear flies, lateral raises, and some presses with the band. There you go. Uh, every trigger session. And that, and we do like three rounds of that. That would be like my uh, prescription to you bef uh, before we scale into MAPS Aesthetic. Sounds great. All right. Let us know what happens. Okay, Kate? Thanks. Super excited. Thank you, guys. No problem. All right. Yeah, just under her chair. <laughs> <laughs> it's under your chair. Yeah. You've been I know. wanting to say that for so long. I, I feel. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, you know what? Because yeah. you have their email, right, Doug? Right? Should you have her email already or not? Uh, Jerry does. Yeah. Oh, it's too bad, Doug. Because if you had it right away, it would be kind of cool to like yeah. him already be sending it, and then you steal yeah. the. Check it. your right pocket. Yeah. <laughs> just kidding. Check your email right now. <laughs> Boom! It's there. Yeah. You know, <laughs> she's gonna do junk file. She just because she stopped Brazilian Jiu Jitsu and is focusing entirely on resistance training. She's gonna get the benefits of that. Oh yeah, she's gonna build some some. Some good muscle. That's why I like this question because, again, it, it highlights uh, all of our tendency. I feel it's just humans, right? <laughs> we want to do all of that. We I have I want to build my shoulders. So I see you guys have a mod program. I see you have yeah. a program that's for aesthetics. Like, but you're going to get tremendous benefits from just running anabolic. And if you want the max benefits from the mod, the max benefits from aesthetic, then you will follow it in that order. If you jump, right. there's steps. You don't want to like do all the steps at the same time. Yes, that's right. All right, our next caller is Mike from Pennsylvania. Hey, Mike, what's up? How can we yo, help you? Yo, yo, Mike, what's up? Yo, what's good, boys? How we doing today? <laughs> good, good. What's going on, man? Oh, we got a live one. <laughs> oh, let's go, dude. First of all, I want to say thank you for having me on. Love the podcast. Um, young personal trainer. Love listening to you guys. You guys have oh, such good advice that, you know, can't really get from a lot of people. But, so I have a question. So I need to know how do I balance out my core again? Because, like, as a kid... No problems, no injuries. As I'm growing older, I have like a left shoulder problem, hip, you know, we all have problems. But I tend to use my right side of my core, like on every single exercise, core, non-core. Um, and it seems like I'm using my top left ab in my my second to top right ab. But, but the whole core on my right side, I'm activating that way more. And I'm, you know, I don't know if it's because of my hip, my, you know, high ankle sprain, shoulder, but... I guess my question for you guys would be, where do I start to get that imbalance back? Well, there's there's two things that come to mind right away for me is, one, I would definitely do, if you don't have MAPS Prime, I would do an assessment to see if there's a breakdown, and there's a good chance you've got a breakdown somewhere all the way down to your feet, right? And that's running all the way up the kinetic chain. So that's the first thing is I'm trying to look to see 
if I, I have limited range of motion in one of my major joints from the foot all the way up, right? So that'd be the first thing. And then an exercise that seems very tedious, and I remember uh, I, I rarely did it as a personal trainer and later on found the value of this, would be the quadruped. And when you do the quadruped, do not uh, do it like you see some some trainers and some people in the gym where they're just kind of going back and forth like as fast as they can through the exercise. Like mm -hmm. you are trying to uh, articulate every inch of that movement and make it look perfect and seamless on both sides. And you're probably going to see and feel a discrepancy on one side or the other, and your your goal is to get that to, to, to match. It's a great exercise. We call it the bird dog, too, for other people who don't know what that quadruped oh. is. But, yeah, so opposite arm and leg and really pointing your – your, your fingers and your toes in opposite directions, but not allowing your hips to rotate is that the biggest part of that um, exercise that you need to focus on. But yeah, to be able to, to, to figure that out, you'll, you'll be able to actually see a, a quite a bit of a discrepancy there if it's there and, and to be able to stay in there and really intensify the tension in your muscles to start trying to communicate again where you need to communicate. Yeah, you can put a stick down your spine while you're doing bird dogs and making sure that the stick stays in contact with the different points of your spine. So the back of the head, upper shoulders, the the pelvis, so that when you're doing it, it doesn't fall off Have your we body done a good video for this? Um, have you we, know, I don't think we have. Yeah, I mean, really, I think we did a bird. Well, dog. we did do one, but I mean, not in like. You know what? We're shooting great detail. We're, shoot, we're shooting fitness tips. I think today or tomorrow with Eli. Put that on our list, yeah, Doug, to that shoot because there. that's you know that it, it's such a uh, a basic movement that I think people are familiar with, but no one really does it well. Yeah. I think, yeah. and so we can talk so, about well, I, I, any of those contralateral type movements and, and exercises you can incorporate uh, where we get that sort of uh, rotating left. Sh to write or like just just getting that type of uh, channel opened up is going to help. A lot. This is also how I would prime all of your workouts. That would be part of my warm up now if I was you. So that would have yeah. I, I would start my workouts with this exercise to get everything kind of firing uh, equally before you go into your other bigger movements. Yeah. Now you, you did say a couple things that were a little confusing. You said something about your upper left ab or upper right ab. So as far as the abs are concerned, they don't really work that way. It's there's two attachments, and so you're not going to activate one you know brick of your ab over the other however you can definitely have a left to right imbalance because of the external internal obliques and mm -hmm. so one thing you can test mike is your rotational ability so windmill so you know you can try a windmill or you can just stand up straight rotate as far as you can without twisting your hips in one direction try in the other direction and see if there's a difference between the two and rotational exercises will help typically balance out the right to left discrepancy when, when it comes to the core. Well, this is why I recommend MAPS yeah. Prime, right? So MAPS Prime is going to highlight that. So if in there is the windmill test, so it's going to uh, highlight the rotational component that Sal's talking about. And then it's also going to highlight what I was talking about with you may have some sort of breakdown in your feet and work your way up. So it's going to tell you a lot. And in there, whichever wherever you have breakdown, there's exercises and movements that you should specifically be doing to address that issue. And that should literally become your routine mm -hmm. that you follow before all your workouts to prime the body properly to start to start and balance this. Do out. you have access to Maps uh, Prime, Mike? I do not. So okay. I started listening to you guys like a month ago. So like I'm kind of catching up on all oh, wow. the stuff. All right. Um, yeah, I do not. I definitely want to. All right. Know, get well, in, we're gonna get send. In. We're gonna send that to you. And because you're a trainer, it's gonna be extremely valuable for your clients as well. Oh, the, yeah. the compass tests and the priming movements. It's going to be tremendous for how you end up training your clients. It's a tremendous tool. And if there's any trainers listening right now, if you don't have Maps Prime, you're making a huge mistake. It's an extremely yeah. valuable tool for trainers. Mike, I always like to ask to our trainers, uh, who's your favorite host? And why is it me? Oh, oh dude. Yeah. Who's my favorite? Dude, I... I all three of you guys, man. I, I love uh, my oh, favorite insane. part is like about the podcast is the beginning part where you guys get a little, you know, in the conspiracies and stuff. I love that part. <laughs> well, um, well, Mike, I'm going to take away. Guy. I'm going to take maps prime back away. Cause I, <laughs> no, you, said, no. you said all of, oh, I'm the one that gave guys. it to you for free. You can I, try. It's almost as bad as the Doug so answer. Jealous. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm just kidding. Thanks for calling, man. Hey, 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 good luck to you guys. I appreciate you guys answering my call, man. No, no problem. Thanks, Mike. Yeah, if you're a trainer, I, I swear to God, I wish I had this as a trainer. I mean, oh my God, Prime and Prime Pro? Are you kidding me? The kind of information that you get in Maps Prime, 
used to be a thousand dollar certification. Yeah. You'd have to go spend a thousand dollars get certified. I say it at least once every hundred episodes that if you are a trainer and you don't own Prime and you don't own Prime Pro, you're an asshole. Yeah, <laughs> just, just flat out like I like that. You, and we, by the way, and there's a free, go to the free webinar. Don't buy it. Go to the fucking free webinars. Watch it. Consume the content. The information in there. In my opinion, if you're a coach, right, as trainer, this isn't, I mean, I think the general population, it's it's extremely valuable, period. But if you are a trainer, when I think of the, the things that I learned over the two decades training clients, the information in both those programs uh, trumps everything else that we have. Oh, yeah. By to, far. So it's mapspromewebinar.com. That's one of them. And then the other one is primeprowebinar.com. And they're totally free. So go check those out. Our next question is from Brianna from Florida. Hey, Brianna, how can we help you? Hey, guys. Uh, just wanted to real quick say you guys are awesome. I listen to you guys every morning. So thank, thank you, you for putting out a bunch of content. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so my question is, I mean, there's a backstory to it, but basically my question is, is it better to lay off um, heavier weights while focusing on mobility and technique or keep driving home technique while doing my heavy lifts? Um, and just continue to prime beforehand because I'm basically powerlifting right now. Yeah, so. good question. No, that's a good question. If you want to improve and you want to improve smoothly and seamlessly, then you're going to back off on the weight. And here's why. The second you push intensity, which is what heavyweight does, your body will always revert to its its recruitment pattern that it's you know been doing for a long time. So Let's say, for example, I'm training a client that, uh, for whatever reason, I'm going to make up a scenario, they, they, they wear high heels all the time. So they walk in high heels all the time. And so they've developed a recruitment pattern where their body gets really good at, at walking in high heels. And then I put them in flat shoes, but I tell them to run as fast as they can. What will end up happening is their body will revert to the high heel recruitment pattern because that's the one that it knows the most. So what happens when you go heavy is you're going to continue to solidify poor recruitment patterns, and it's going to be hard or if not impossible to change those recruitment patterns, even if you add a lot of mobility work. So ideally what you would do is you'd go back off on the weight, back off on the intensity, focus on mobility, focus on skill and technique. Don't push the intensity because it automatically throws your technique back to what you're used to doing. Do that for a while until the problems are solved, until the new recruitment pattern Gross. is solidified, then go back yeah. to lifting heavy. I I 100 yeah. I 100% agree. Who's that? Who's that? They got a question. Sorry. <laughs> Did you snap at your mom? No. <laughs> I uh, I 100% agree with Sal. I I do believe though you can still go heavy. You just got to you 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 got to train with like this mindset. So let's say you know, what happens a lot of times someone's following a program, even if they're following like a MAPS program, they see on the program that this set I'm supposed to do six to eight reps and you load the bar up with a weight that you think you do that. Now, what ends up happening, let's say at rep four, it's getting kind of heavy and hard, but you definitely can get six to eight and you push through and you get your six to eight. But on reps five and six, you kind of shimmy a little bit or the form isn't perfect and breaks down. If you're focused on the, the mobility aspect and correcting imbalances and that's where our focus is, I'm, I'm stopping the set at four. So, you know, even okay. though, even though I can get five, so it still allows you to go kind of heavy and challenge yeah, yourself, your intensity's low. but I'm not worried about the rep range that my programming yes. is or what I, I'm, I care so much about form that the minute I feel that it's going to break down, I'm stopping the rep yeah. right there. Well, I'm going to add to that in terms of like going less reps, but also like stopping right before you know you you, you see that sort of discrepancy. Have you you lean into that and you, you make it an isometric exercise? And so now I'm like st I'm slowly like really addressing it and, and honing in on it and trying to to actively uh, recruit more muscle fibers to to provide support. And so. Um, but again, you'll be able to find that, um, you know, with, with less weight and, it, and your body's going to be able to be trained a lot more efficiently that way to, uh, to be able to kind of get past that one discrepancy. Yeah, whatever you train, you get stronger at. So you strengthen what you train. And if you train a, a poor recruitment pattern, then that's what's going right. to become strong for you. So in order to change that... You got to back off and work with a different and train a new recruitment pattern. And that takes a little bit of time. But here's the good news. Once you do it, 
you'll surpass what you did before. If you don't do it, it's going to be very hard, if not impossible, to get out of the, the place that you're in now. I also, I, I, I'm reading your question now too. I, I see it up on the screen right now. And you say your, your hip dips a little bit when you come out of the squat. Yeah. So, um, I usually feel it. Like I, like I said in my question, um, there's, it's, I can only feel it when I go very, very heavy. And it's not until after I start feeling, um, like my, just the left side of that, um, erector spinet and I can feel it. Like if I go in for another set, it feels like I pushed something too hard or that there is like a discrepancy there. So I've dialed back for the past like two to three months. Um, and they, my squats feel a lot better. Um, but I guess my question was, uh, should I continue to maintain strength by, you know, pushing the heavy weight, but not going past that, like that point of where everything starts breaking down? Yeah, no, I yeah. would, I would definitely not go past or hit your max at all. You don't, you don't want to be dealing with, if you're constantly, uh, feeling that shift while you're also trying to correct it, it you're just, you're, you're going to, you're going to be stuck in a loop the whole time. Do but, you have maps prime yeah. pro? Yeah. That's where I'm going with this. Um, I don't. Okay, we're going to send that to you because that's the program that you should focus on. And I would do mobility movements for hips, ankles, and feet several times a day. Spend about five to ten minutes several times every single day working on those movements. And then when you work out, drop the intensity, and it's all about uh, technique and form. Have you, ever, have you ever filmed your feet when you squat? Like I, <laughs> I actually film myself quite a lot. And I just filmed my squat, um, the other day I have a slight, um, uh, what is it? A pronation when I, um, totally I'm up. Yeah. It's like so slight, but that's what's, um, that's what's causing the, that just so you know, that's what's causing the, the hip shift too. Yeah. And and if you're, that's what's what's, what's happening is that this, the side that's, that's, that's pronating and opening up, mm -hmm. you're, you're shifting on the opposite high, opposite side. So, and that's, and then that's also why you're feeling it on, on one side of your your erectors. Yeah. I, and, and because you're strong and you're lifting heavy weight, I see here that you're aiming for a thousand pound uh, total. Wow. Um, Yeah. That's the goal. Which is tremendous, right? The the slightest discrepancy between right and left, it doesn't make that big of a difference when you're lifting a hundred pounds. You start lifting 200, 300 pounds. Now it makes a big difference. Mm -hmm. So, and I mean, honestly, I could literally put a, if I put a quarter of an inch rise in, in somebody who's strong in one of their shoes, they will develop some serious problems within a very short period of time. You give that to somebody who's not lifting very heavy, they might not notice for a long time. So because you're pushing your body, because you're really strong, this is very important. Yeah, that makes sense. All right. Well, thanks for calling in. All right, thank you guys. No problem. That's pretty damn strong. Yeah, it's really yeah. strong. It's uh, it's pretty impressive. But yeah, you know, I, this is an example I've used before. I'll, I'll say it again, just for the audience, if they have never heard this. But let's say you've you've always only ever typed with your two index fingers. You know, the hunt and peck, uh, you know, uh, method of typing, and you've done that for years. You're pretty fast with your two index fingers. If I go and then try to get you to type properly using all of your fingers. You're going to be slower at the better method at first. So if somebody came to you and said, type as fast as you can, you would have to revert to your old method because that's your recruitment pattern. That's what you're best at. The new method, there's a learning curve before it surpasses uh, the old method. So it's the same thing with recruitment patterns it with takes exercise. A, a whole lot of reps too. So yes. you have to be very patient with this new approach. Uh, and, and so that's just something you're you're going to have to reconcile with that. It's going to take a while. Now, the positive though is that you, you're also going to see benefits though, besides just that, like the speed of it, you're also going to see your body still changing because you're still progressing. Everybody thinks progressing always has to be me putting more weight on the bar. Right. If you're working on mobility, getting a greater, greater range of motion you have better stability and control the body will show results so you could te technically still lean out or add muscle and look better and feel better mm -hmm. and show progression there even though you may see a dramatic reduction oh, in your squat a better squat with lighter weight is going to give you better results than a heavier More squat muscle that's not as good so that's just a, the bottom line uh look um thanks for listening to the show if you like our information head over to mindpumpfree.com we have a lot of free stuff that we give away, a lot of free content, free guides on everything from burning body fat to building muscle, sculpting your body. We even have guides for personal trainers. You can also find all of us on Instagram. So you can find Justin at Mind Pump Justin, me at Mind Pump Sal, and Adam at Mind Pump Adam. This is the key to health and fitness success. This is one of the things I love most about fitness is if you stick to it long enough, 
it makes you feel empowered because to in order to get fit and to stay fit, you have to take responsibility. You can't say it's my genetics. It's the way I was brought up. It's my bone structure. My parents were overweight. My mm -hmm. parents are unathletic. 